Okay, and now we'll we'll go over a couple of um, a couple more bear markets. We're just trying to see if any of these can provide any useful analogs. The first we'll look at is 1962. Um, the backdrop here is is really the the Cuban Missile Crisis um, that sort of culminated in in a couple of weeks in October, where you see this retest um, actually occurred. Um, but it lines up pretty nicely with a, a pretty steep. Uh, declined the first two quarters, a tradable rally, which we could be getting right here, um, and then a retest later in the year. Uh, another another bear market we want to we want to look at is, is 1990. Uh, 1990, a little bit different uh, environment, of course, and um, this this sort of began when Iraq invaded Kuwait on August 2nd, 1990. Uh, and similarly to that environment, we had high energy prices. Um, and a lot of times high energy prices will lead a recession um, as you know real incomes decline for consumers as the, you know they can't spend on other items since a larger share of their wallets going to that energy. Um, they also had restrictive monetary policy in this. But if we're looking at this period of time and trying to compare it to 1990, they, you know the, the market bottomed and, and you know, just we want to keep an open mind. Uh, we know the news is bad and we know sentiment is bad and um, nobody really, I, I think, believes in much of a tradable bounce yet. So, you know, those ingredients, um, you know, would, would suggest that we could have a tradable rally here or, you know, even the bottom is in. But um, I think like like my dad mentioned earlier, we, you know, if, if we're in a recession, we don't necessarily think we're out of the woods yet. And Wes, let me point out as well, Richard, uh, in 1990, the market bottomed, but, uh, and I remember because m one of my biggest years was in 1991, January, and we had a follow through day, I think it was January 17th of 1991, and the market bottomed in October, but we didn't get going, and I remember vividly buying Amgen, Costco, US Sur I believe US Surgical, Microsoft that was going from DOS to Windows. So those stocks came later. So what we're doing is lay, laying the groundwork right now during this bear market. And we don't know who those companies are, but it may be, they may show themselves three or four months after the actual bottom in the indexes. Great, thank you. Um, okay, and a little bit longer chart, we, we touched on 1962 already, but um, more context. Notice that the bear market officially sort of starts with that 20% pullback, right, by definition here. Uh, and then we had five months of, of choppiness, so really nothing tradable. Um, and like Roy just mentioned, um, there's there's still some, some time, right, for, for leadership to uh, emerge, and, and we wouldn't see leadership necessarily until we're really out of the woods. And so um, there's a lot that can happen over the next several months. Um, and we're, you know, we're just now really by definition in a bear market for the S&P. Uh, here's another example of 1970. Notice the bear market uh, by definition again starting um, in, in February or January of 1970. Uh, and then we have another leg down um, beyond that. And six months later, uh, you know, we're, we're really just consolidating and getting out of, of a bear market. This this bear market overall was about a year and a half long. Uh, we were about we were down about thirty five percent from the peak, um, and it was also a recessionary environment. Um, so the recession really started uh, the at the very end of nineteen sixty nine in this instance, um, and you know I think that let or made for a a worse um, than average bear market. And let me just say as well, pitch in that that's really what we would find ideal right now we ideally we would get one more leg down where not people what people are saying but what people are doing and then the bear market has one more leg down that washes out everyone and everyone capitulates that's it still left in the market that's ideally the best scenario from here and uh, and frankly that's what we're prepared for right right Exactly. And so 1974, uh, another another example of a bear market we're, we're trying to study. Again, notice this this bear market definition uh, starts here in November of 19, 
uh, 73. It continues on for um, another year, uh, bottoming in October of the following year. Um, you know, this similarly saw rising oil prices, um, which fueled an inflation, uh, you know, again, with, with real incomes of consumers declining. Um, just a generally high inflation environment persisted for the rest of the decade. Um, obviously, something we're dealing with now. And so the market was down nearly 50%. And this bear market uh, lasted almost two years. Um, so, you know, some parallels here. Uh, hopefully, the inflation environment that we're in now is not going to persist for six years um, like it did here. But we, we will see. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in, a few, in a few more slides. And the yellow, uh, in the yellow uh, portion of the average, that's a 50-day and uh, a 200-day moving average or 50-period and a 200-period? 50-day, yeah, 200-day, yeah. Okay. So you can see, and this is called the golden cross when the 50-day the crosses the 200-day. This is a lagging trend following indicator, but you can see uh, that – this lagging indicator got you out in 1973 and got you back in when the market had convincingly made a bottom. And we like to use the 30 week moving average, two consecutive moves over the 30 week. That's why I'm not in any hurry whatsoever to buy now because the trend is weeks away from that potentially happening. And that's just important to know from a trend perspective. And again, the 10 day cross and the 21 day, that's a very short term indicator. 21 day crossing the 50 intermediate. And then again, the 50 crossing the 200 day is a long term indicator. Right. Um, okay, so we've got a couple more uh, to go through. And this is the 2002 bear market. We're calling it the second bear market after a, a meaningful bounce uh, in, in late 2000. One, uh, this bear market, uh, we were down about 35% from that uh, from that peak bounce uh, in, in early 2002. Uh, this followed the the bounce was really fueled after a, a rally uh, after September 2001, and we bought them about 10 days after 9/11. So um, you know around where the markets reopened following that. Um, but again, just you know, after you enter that bear market, there, this bottoming could be a process. It could be several months down the line when we get a real meaningful and sustained um, bull market. And so you, you have to be careful to, to not get chopped up and um, and, and potentially, um, you know, buy, buy capitulation events like we, we see a couple um, that look capitulatory here on, on this chart. Okay, and then uh, 2008 to 2009, uh, a prolonged bear market as well. Uh, the market dropped over 50% here. And um, of course, a, a deep recession during this period fueled by the housing crisis. Um, and like we talked about earlier, this is this is a, a bear market starts here and we're looking for that last leg down where there's um, certainly a lot of panic, uh, you know, in, in this last leg as, as firms uh, started to fail uh, and, you know, the banking crisis uh, occurred with that as well. Okay, and then in two, in now the current bear market that we're in. Uh, notice right here, we're in this bottom right hand corner of the, the chart. Um, the other charts we were looking at had, you know, bear market start in the, the back half and there was a lot left to go. Um, there's, there's potential for that. You know, there's a lot to uncover from here.